Inside Outside Innovation is the podcast that brings you the best and the brightest in the world of startups and innovation. I'm your host, Brian Ardinger, founder of InsideOutside.io, a provider of research, events, and consulting services that help innovators and entrepreneurs build better products, launch new ideas, and compete in a world of change and disruption. Each week, we'll give you a front row seat to the latest thinking, tools, tactics, and trends in collaborative innovation. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. I'm your host, Brian Ardinger. And like always, we bring the best movers, shakers, makers, founders, builders, and doers to the show. Today, we have another special guest, Vivek Betty. Vivek is the head of consumer experience digital products at Northwestern Mutual. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I am excited to have you on the show because we're all about talking shop with the people that are in the trenches doing this stuff. You are in the trenches right now with Northwestern Mutual and the corporate innovation side of things, but you have a background in the startup world as well. So maybe to get the audience up to speed with a little bit about how you got into this innovation space, how about you give us a little bit of background on who you are and, and how you got working in innovation? Yeah, Brian, thank you for that. Started off on the engineering side, went to Rutgers University. That was my alma mater, computer engineering and computer science double major. Spent about 13 years at Goldman Sachs, really focused on digital communications and innovation. Did a stint at a startup, really focused on kind of background checks and modernizing that space. Had my own startup, really geared at kind of digital swapping and bartering which really was an exciting experience and really kind of made me see the other side as opposed to big companies. And now I have the best of both. I'm at Northwestern Mutual. Half the team is in New York, and it really has that innovation customer center persona. And the other half of the team is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So I get to work on challenges from an innovation and startup perspective, as well as big company and scalability issues. It's amazing. And not a lot of people have had kind of both sides of the table. And I think that's one reason why a lot of corporate innovation books kind of stumble sometimes is they haven't seen the other side of what it takes when you have to be frugal and work from the ground up. So maybe let's start there. So you've had some experience growing and building your own company from the start. What are the core differences that you're seeing between the startup world versus the corporate innovation world? Yeah. You know what I'd say from the startup world and just all my experiences, it's a lot easier to push things out faster. You can make more decisions on, you know, getting the right resources together and making decisions and, you know, making things publicly available faster. So you get the speed and agility. But I think where you stumble is thinking about reputational risk, compliance, and bringing in some of the big company aspects of it as well. On the big company side, a lot of red tape process sometimes holds you back, but you also get the wealth of knowledge. So I always try to find that right balance of both. I don't think one is better than the other, Brian. I really try to bring the best of both from the startup side of my experiences and the big company experiences and find that middle ground. That's the sweet spot to get things done. So let's talk a little bit about your role today, head of consumer experience digital products at Northwestern Mutual. And tell us a little about what does that mean? How does that actually manifest itself in, into creating new products and services? So the team is responsible for any and everything that's digital that touches our consumers and our clients. We have 4.3 million clients across the nation. So the team's really chartered for building out their mobile app suite, their client web suite, anything from digitally servicing their policies and their investment products. So really focused on everything and anything that digital that hits the 4.3 million clients. What I'll say about three years ago, the bar was very different than where it is today. Of those 4.3 million clients, only about 150,000 came to any form of digital. We didn't have a set of mobile apps. We didn't have a pre-logged in experience. And the world's changed quite a bit. We have over 1.8 million clients now using the digital experience. We have a set of mobile apps on Android and iOS. We have a pre-client logged in experience. So a lot of that has been the team across New York and Milwaukee coming together, startup and big company to really kind of help us change the way we work, right? And create this new third culture that I can talk more about. And that third culture has really proved very rewarding just by the adoption numbers that we've had in our digital experience. So let's dig into that a little bit. You mentioned culture as a big primary differentiator and way you have used the opportunity to change the way consumers experience the brand. Talk a little bit about how did that culture start? What is it and how is it making a difference? So the culture has been interesting. You know, my first meeting at Northwestern Mutual reminded me a lot of my Goldman Sachs days. Big company, a lot of people thinking through the problem, really kind of big meetings. 
And in New York, we had that culture of that startup innovation talent. And what we really came together and what I realized is we need to kind of get the subject matter expertise that we have in Milwaukee with this new way of agile working and bring them together. So we created a concept called Pizza Pie Teams. Okay, Brian, they're basically a pod team and we call them Pizza Pie Teams internally because the team shouldn't be bigger than a Pizza Pie box or two can serve. We have about 35 of them now. So they comprise of about eight to 10 folks from UX designers, product managers, front end, back end engineers. The team is tasked with one charter. Every two weeks, they're going to release something, whether it's a small release, a big release, they're going to get in that cadence of putting out changes. And it's been very interesting to bring, and by the way, the teams are across New York and Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. So bringing those teams together has really kind of changed the way that we work and think from a culture's perspective. Fun stat, three years ago, we had 89 releases to the digital experience. Last year, we had 4,005. With this new pod pizza pie team model, we've really been able to accelerate the amount of change that we're putting out. The other thing I'd say about culture is we've also become research and iterative. We've created two communities. In our business, we actually have two clients. We have our clients that are buying life insurance and investment products day in and day out. But we also have a field force of 8,000 advisors that are meeting with folks day in and day out and selling the product. We've actually tapped into building communities with them. So we have about 4,000 of our advisors that we call our digital experience lab. They get to see black and whites of things before we release them. We involve them in our pizza pie teams and really work and obsess with them on understanding how their sales model works. On the flip side, on the client side, we've done the same. Of our 4.3 million clients, we have about 40,000 of them that we're meeting with, engaging with day in and day out and obsessing from a UX perspective, things that they stumble on. So that research-oriented culture combined with our pizza pie model has really been, I like to call it a third blended culture that we've created. So let me unpack some of that stuff. So you've got these pizza pie teams. I'm assuming they're all, they're kind of cross-functional and to do that, they have the authority and, and the ability to actually execute on what they're trying to do. So how important is that cross-functionality to making something actually agile or faster or effective? Yeah. And, you know, that is actually a very good point because it's very important. These teams are the product folks and the design folks report into me, but the engineers report into our technology counter, my technology counterpart, the business folks report into the business. So these are very blended cross matrix teams. And this has been the way that, you know, as you started your conversation earlier on saying, you know, some of the differences between startup and big company, we've really been kind of able to, you know, change the mindset of the big company as well as the startups to think through that we need to have these horizontal teams. So these are very much virtual teams that come together and it's very important for them to be on the same page. They're meeting every day and having their stand up. And it's very interesting to also see business folks in stand up meetings, right? And they're really understanding the way that we're working day in and day out. And that's really been, you know, a key component of that synergy and that trust that the teams have built across the wide organization. So let's step back a little bit to when this was started, going from one way of working to this brand new way of working. Probably it wasn't all roses and that were some of the challenges with implementing some of these new concepts into the world. So the challenges were getting people to understand that this model would work. I think historically, as in many big companies, it's been more of a waterfall approach. And, you know, we talk about Agile, we talk about Scrum, and we talk about all the various methodologies that are out there in the product community. And, you know, what I realized is that's not the right approach to convince people that this model will work, right? It's not about reading a book on, you know, different types of structures and methodologies. What we'd really try to do is show it. As right. simple as it sounds, we picked a team. Um, we used the pilot of one pod team, one pizza pie team that was really focused on our client website experience and one component of it which was really geared at linking your external assets, not your NM, Northwestern Mutual stuff, but your non-NM stuff, your personal stuff, your home, your credit card, your mortgages, and really bring that together and bring your entire financial picture. And that team was really interesting. The way we helped kind of show that model to the rest of the organization is we put on a show, right, Brian? Hmm. We actually yeah. didn't bring presentations. We didn't try to convince people of, this is how you do products. We literally showed black and whites of this is what we can do. Here's the advantages that we can promote. Here's how teams can come together. We showed videos of us doing the stand-ups, right? We had people come to our stand-ups and watch. And that really created this buzz and aura 
where it's spread in the organization. You know, we're wired as humans to see value. When the organization started seeing the value instead of just hearing and talking about it, it became real to them. And then that one team spread to five teams, which spread to 10, and now we have 30 plus, right? It wasn't easy, as you alluded to. It was a lot more convincing. And I'd say storytelling, show and tell, bringing them, showing by example, rolling up your sleeves, having them participate in a lot of our sessions was really some of the tactics that got us through across the finish line. Have you found that particular types of talent or particular characteristics within particular groups have been more effective of being able to adapt to that particular model? Or have you gone back to hiring and changing the actually talent base that executes on this stuff? You know, that's a good question. I think two parts of it. One, internally, as a part of the team, as we look at engineers, dev leads, product managers, et cetera, we found that, you know, I'm coming from an engineering background within the team. I realized that it's equally important to have a development lead. So all of our pod teams actually have two captains. There's two captains on a plane for a reason, right? One is a product lead that's really thinking through kind of research, um, user experience, and, you know, focused on the external components of it. And an engineering lead really focused on engineering principles, best practices. As we build out a lot of these pod teams and we think of talent, we're thinking of talent that really can excel at that model of working together and bringing people together. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of EQ. EQ is as important as IQ. You know, our folks that we're interviewing into these pod teams, can they work? on big company challenges? Can they understand the subtleties of other people's perspectives and really kind of think through that? So that's one aspect of it. As far as the rest of the organization, there are some areas where we still struggle in convincing that, you know, this model is the right model to work. Great area to pinpoint is more on platforms. Can this model work when it's more big systems and legacy components that we're looking to upgrade? And it's not just user experience, right? There, we're spending a lot more time, what I like to call platform managers, right, that are focused inward and really kind of looking at internal stakeholders and bringing them along. So uphill battle, we're still working on it. But as we look at talent, I think we look at talent across a lot of different dynamics. But most important is talent that will gel with the team and really kind of understand all perspectives of it. That's amazing. You mentioned one aspect, obviously, is the team and the cross-collaboration and the ability to, to move and think fast and build things from that perspective. But I think the other key component seems to be the access to consumers and the ability to touch into what's actually happening on the ground, what are consumers thinking, what problems yeah. are they having. So I imagine for a lot of corporations, that is a big challenge as well. You know, how do we actually communicate and talk to customers in, in different ways? So talk a little bit about that particular aspect of corporate innovation and, and that closeness to the customer and how that changes the dynamics. Yeah, and that's been actually a big theme over the last few years. We are getting very, very, very close to our customer. And remember, we have two customers. We're in a B2B2C business. We have Mm -hmm. our advisors that are with the clients day in and out and our actual clients and even pre-clients, folks that Mm -hmm. are looking to purchase product from us. Let's start with the advisors. For me, who runs the digital team when it comes to the client experience, I would say 60% of my time, Brian, is actually spent with our advisors. It's ironic because you would think the reverse, but I think that they are the ones that are there. Our product set is very complex and emotional, right? It's about life, death, money, and your family, not like car insurance that's a little bit more commoditized. So we spend a lot of time learning some of the subtleties of the business. My team has shadow sessions where they're watching advisors in action at Starbucks with various prospects and learning how do they maneuver and what are the things they say and what are the tools they use. We've started a concept called Creative Labs where we get our top advisors in a room, we push out the conference room chairs, we ask them to wear jeans, and we'll have sticky notes and we'll whiteboard problems with them. So they get a glimpse on how we think of problems and day in and day out. But we also get a glimpse on where their mind's at, what are some of the challenges they have. A lot of those creative tactics and the product team spends quite a bit of time thinking some of that through. On the client side, I've come to realize that it's important that whether your clients, we have multi-generation clients, right? We have clients that we call our YPM clients. They're our young professional market, 35 and younger. You know, they gravitate towards digital first, but then we have some more senior clients as well that really want to call their advisor. So they want to embrace digital, but they want to embrace it in different ways. So we learned very quickly that we have to make sure whether our clients type, swipe, or print they all matter, right? Right. So we spend a lot of time making sure that we look at different demographics, different regions of clients, and really doing that deep analysis study, 
bringing them in, spending time with them, and really understanding some of their pain points, and finding the right balance that'll be a good digital platform for all of them, not just the younger ones. You know, that brings up a good point from the standpoint of you're in an industry, obviously, most industries right now are being disrupted by a variety of technologies and market changes and that, but particularly in the world of finance and insurance and they are ripe for disruption. And it seems like some companies are doing better or worse at navigating that trend. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in that particular space? And why do you think Northwestern Mutual is in a position to be a part of that next generation of disruption going on? Some of the trends that I'm seeing that frankly excite me is one is financial literacy. So many people, Brian, lose sleep over finances, right? And yep. it's actually an issue that spanned multiple generations. I was recently reading an article that even millennials lose quite a bit of sleep on this, right? And the theme goes back to that they never had great financial tools. Some of the trends that I'm very excited about is just financial literacy, right? More education on around why money matters, why having a budget matters, why having a plan matters. So those are areas that really excite me. And what I'll tell you is it is risky terrain. When you're going down some of this, you want to have that person on the other end that you trust and that is your trusted advisor and someone that can guide you through it. So that's why I think bringing some of those digital components that are out there that are disruptive and combining them with the 8,000 amazing advisors that we have is right. the secret sauce that Northwestern Mutual has. Because then it's not just a moment in time. This is a relationship that you can turn and lean back on. And digital is various channels that you can connect with your advisor that'll be there for you when you need him or her. And that's where I think we have a unique advantage because we're bringing digital and that field force together to really create that financial security and that plan that our consumers and clients are looking for. Fascinating stuff. Vivek, I thank you very much for being on Inside Outside Innovation. If people want to find out a little bit more about yourself or Northwestern Mutual, what's the best way to do that? The best way to do that is find me on LinkedIn. Find me on Twitter, uh, Vivek Betty. Um, also, uh, you can find me on my website, VivekBetty.com. Excellent. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much, Brian. That's it for another episode of Inside Outside Innovation. If you want to learn more about our team, our content, our services, check out InsideOutside.io or follow us on Twitter at the IO Podcast or at Artinger. Until next time, go out and innovate.